Hello everyone, welcome back to the Matt Vidpro AI YouTube channel. Hey, if you've been watching the channel for a while, why don't you check and see if you are subscribed because YouTube has been randomly unsubscribing my viewers from my channel, at least according to you guys in the comments, so you might want to check and resubscribe. I've got a pretty cool one for you guys today. Essentially, what we're taking a look at today is image generation AI improving itself over time with the help of AI that actually has vision capabilities. So if you guys remember, some really big recent AI news was that OpenAI announced their GPT-4 vision model, essentially giving ChatGPT the ability to see images just like a human. So these researchers have taken that GPT-4 vision capability and applied it to an AI image generator, starting out with a general image, then showing it to a GPT-4V, having GPT-4V then put a prompt into SDXL, generating an image, and then pumping it back into GPT-4 Vision and saying, here's what you came up with. Essentially doing this looping process over and over again, teaching GPT-4 Vision the best way to create a prompt for SDXL. Now you might be thinking, why not use Dolly 3? Well, I think for the researchers, it was just a little bit easier to use SDXL, but using SDXL actually has a hidden benefit here because this method is so good that it's producing images out of SDXL that I never would have thought were possible. I mean, these are like almost Dolly 3 level of quality because it's able to prompt SDXL so well with this self-iterative learning process. I want to take a deeper dive into this, but first a word from our sponsor. Today's video is brought to you by Magical. Now, if you're anything like me, then you probably spend a lot of your time emailing. And every single time you write an email, 90% of that email is just professionalism and formatting, right? Not the actual important key information. Now, what if I told you that there is a free AI assistant in the form of a Chrome extension called Magical that'll help you save time on most of that repetitive work? Magical's AI assistant is a classic case of work smarter, not harder. It is completely free for you to install right in Chrome, and their AI reply feature is really well integrated and works fantastic. It gives me the super quick options to either hit yes or no for email responses or even do a custom one. It'll format everything in a super professional manner, allowing you to worry about the more important bits. It'll also work right inside of Slack, pretty much anywhere there is a text box. And if you're on a website where you just don't need it, it's an easy one click to get rid of the extension. What's really cool is that Magical also has built-in commands, so if you do a double dash, all of those very similar style emails you write can be automated into a specific template. They take privacy very seriously, they don't collect or store any of your personal data, including keystrokes, your information stays private. They offer a forever free plan that includes all of their core useful features, but they do have paid plans with more advanced features that I think are pretty reasonably priced with a nice two-week free trial. Check them out at getmagical.com, and now back to your regularly scheduled programming. Welcome back, everybody. Let's take a look. So this right here is what the researchers are calling idea to image, kind of coining it as its own image generation because that's just how good it is, quite frankly. Iterative self-refinement with GPT-4 vision for automatic image design and generation. It's a pretty good way of defining it. As you can see, this is the Microsoft Azure AI team. And if you guys know anything, Microsoft actually works very closely with OpenAI. So that's how they got access to this exclusive GPT-4 Vision API to develop this technology. Again, I'm kind of interested as to why they didn't pick Dolly 3 for this test. It could be the fact that Dolly 3 actually wasn't out and wasn't ready when they were doing this research. There are some researchers, I must say, that do look pretty familiar. Either way, the Microsoft Azure AI team has done some good work here. This is a direct link to the paper, and we can see right off the bat there's some very impressive things going on. So in these examples, we've got the general idea, then just basic text to image, and finally their idea to image, which uses that recursive 
GPT-4 vision method. The basic idea for this one was five people sitting around a table drinking beer and eating buffalo wings. And honestly, the SDXL base text to image does a pretty good job. It gets it across, but there's some weird glitching going on and it's not a perfect result. Idea to image, on the other hand, makes things very cinematic and actually quite nice. And you'll notice you got all five people. One, two, three, four, five. They got the beer, they got the wings. There's still some messy glitching going on, but but that's SDXL. Overall, we can see a much more improved result in the idea to image. And the news gets better too, because this thing actually can make text work a lot better. It learned how to prompt for text. It says a whole cake on the table with words Azure research written on the cake. Obviously, SDXL does not get that off the bat, but with their idea to image, it manages to complete it. The really nice solid image, lots of good details, and Azure research almost perfect on the cake, just missing the R. So that's a really big improvement and a shocking one. Again, the model SDXL is staying the same for this. This is just an improvement in the prompting by using GPT-4 vision to iteratively build on the prompt. Next up, an image of a hand holding an iPhone. The image is used for illustrating how to take a screenshot on an iPhone. We get this really gross wiki how messed up image with base text to image and idea to image gives us a much better result. Still, you know, not as perfect as you could probably get with a quick prompt in Dolly 3 because the model is so much better. However, it's a huge improvement over what you get just out of the model. So imagine this thing applied to something like Dolly 3. Prompt following also massively improves because you're using that GPT-4 image understanding. A plate that has no bananas on it, there is a glass without orange juice next to it. This kind of tricks the base text to image because it sees those words in the prompt and it just adds them in. But this thing has intelligent understanding and can account for this. Better prompt following, we're asking for a logo here, this thing is not giving us a logo. This one actually does give you the logo. Kind of the same thing going on down here. Image of a car perfect for a children's painting competition, this is quite a lot better for that specific application. But wait, there's more concept customization and visual pointing, meaning right here we can actually point to specific objects in specific photos that we send GPT-4 vision and then say generate me that object that we are pointing at only and then a brown corgi dog chasing it. Gives us much more coherent results and it can kind of inject this image or this specific object into our prompt just by looking at it. We can do the same thing saying, hey, I want this specific pose in this photo. We can upload any photo to this thing, remember? And it will copy that specific pose in the final prompt, where there's not really a good way to do that with regular text to image right now. You're also able to do style transfer this way, which is pretty insane. Typically style transfer is like an inherent model thing, but you can actually do it with the regular stable diffusion. Just by showing the style you want to GPT-4 vision and then letting it prompt and iterate for you. As you can see, you get a really, really nice result out of it. Honestly, a lot better than I would have originally thought. They are also able to do actual image manipulation shockingly good, a lot better than I thought. So they upload that same image of the tennis player and then they say, oh, I want this to be a drawing and I also want the background changed to a beach. And obviously you're not really gonna get a good result with the basic text to image, but man, it actually works really, really well. Again, you're not really uploading the image directly to SDXL. You're telling GPT-4 to essentially describe this and you know, I'm just so shocked it was able to do it this well. And then we've got some more image to image capabilities here saying copy this exact style in the drawing and it works really, really quite well. Just shows you how good that GPT-4 vision model truly is and how much it's able to understand about images you upload. It's able to do even more complex tasks. Find the image style pattern in the left two dog images and apply it on the top right. Essentially the task ends up being provide a textual description that keeps the content in the people in the tree pose image with the correct style pattern from the dog image. I can't believe how well that works. It totally has that style from the dog image and does like a very, very accurate representation of the tree pose image. So essentially what you're doing is combining style transfer and image to image capabilities with this. Pretty darn mind blowing. This one also 
blew me away doing custom images with multiple concepts at once. So what we're saying here is we want a photo of Bill Gates wearing the same exact clothes as this man. But Bill Gates should have a dog by his side that looks just like this one. Again, we're just uploading random images into GPT-4 Vision. And our output here is very accurate. He's definitely with that same exact dog breed, and he's wearing pretty much the same clothes as this guy over here. We've got some more ideas combined with style transfer at once. So we want a painting of a tennis game like this with this style, and it does a really accurate job at replicating that. And it can even blend images together to get a new visual design. So we upload this logo, and then we upload the pug, say combine them together, and we get this really nice pug logo thing. Again, this is not Dolly 3. This is all SDXL. It's pretty incredible how good it got. So idea to image at its core is a multimodal iterative self-refinement system. I think that's a better definition than I originally gave. And it actually can enhance any text to image model because again, it's not messing with that core technology. You could add this to Dolly 3. You could add this into Midjourney, any of them. This is automatic image design and generation. It enables various new image creation functionalities. And overall, you just get better better visual qualities. As I said earlier, GPT-4 Vision is interacting with the text-to-image model to probe its usage for automatic image design and generation. Generates text prompts that correspond to the input multimodal user data, the underlying idea, and it will carefully compare the draft images with the original idea and gives you the most promising one. And then it does feedback reflection, so some verifying, where it examines the discrepancy between the draft image and the base idea. And the most important part here is then it gives feedback on what is incorrect, the plausible causes of that incorrection, and how text-to-image prompts might be revised to get a better image. So this whole thing only works because of this feedback and the fact that the GPT-4 vision capabilities are actually far greater than current day image generation capabilities. So this is kind of how it works in a visual format. I'll try to follow this the best I can. We've got our base idea, Bill Gates giving the same hand gesture as this dude, and he's got a dog by his side that looks like this. We put this into our system here. It does some first initial draft images, GPT-4 Vision selects the best draft images in comparison to these initial ideas. So not just these images, but also the text prompts themselves, gives us some feedback on those initial draft images, then decides on a new prompt to be put into SDXL, and then the whole process essentially loops. And yeah, after a while, we get a really nice output. Looks just like Bill Gates actually in that same image. It even got the tree in the background and the cars, same lighting even. It works way too good, honestly, better than it should. So will we in the future be able to use something with this quality level? I think absolutely. This paper really does prove that this method works. It's combining the large language model with just a regular text to image and you get vastly better results. The only downside here is this actually does take more time than just typing in a prompt and generating something like we're used to. We could do a rudimentary version of this ourselves by using GPT-4 Vision and Dolly 3 inside of ChatGPT right now, and that's basically what I did in my initial video. There is a lot of really great examples and good information inside of the paper and on this website, so I'll link it all down below. There is one other major requirement that we would need if we wanted to apply something like this ourselves. And and that would be access to this GPT-4 vision model inside of an API format, meaning it could actually be coded to be used inside of a website, let's say. And right now, this GPT-4 vision model is only available inside of ChatGPT 4 plus users. There's no API access. And the only way that the researchers here for this were able to get access is because it's Microsoft and they've got close connections and relations with OpenAI. But I think this is a really good paper for the AI art generation community as a whole. I think this is really exciting and I can't wait until a more solid and usable commercial form exists for us AI enthusiasts, straight up improving the quality of your text to image generators without actually developing a better text to image generator itself. It's really interesting. This also is really great for 
text image research as a whole because this will essentially show us the limits of the models, just exactly what they can get up to in their very best. It's AI teaching AI at this point. So yeah, let me know what you think. There's a lot of applications for this research and uh, I think it's very exciting. I'll link everything down below. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.